Hi, I'm John Twist of University of Motors, and I want to talk to you today about the, the evaporative loss control system on the late model MGBs. There was some sort of evaporative loss control system all the way, all the way from the T-types, so right up through 1980, but by 1977 it's getting pretty complicated, and I want to go underneath the bonnet on the Sand Glow 77B and show you some of the things and how it works, how it's supposed to work, and so forth. Let's take a look at it here. First of all, we've got a very large black tube right here, this guy here, who starts at the beginning of the car and allows fresh air to come through that tube into the anti-run-on valve. From, oh, we'll hook him back up. From the anti-run-on valve, then it runs into the bottom of the charcoal adsorption canister and through a whole lot of charcoal in there. It's just like fish charcoal and then it gets drawn out on this tube here into the engine, into the valve cover, and then it's drawn back out of the engine down here and run into the carburetor. So there's always, when the engine's running, there's always a, a fresh air moving down this tube, through the canister, through the tube, into the engine, out of the engine, and getting drafted into the carburetor. And this is putting a slight suction on the on the uh, air and so forth and that's why that that air moves through here now the charcoal in here does uh, a couple of functions well it grabs all the unburned hydrocarbons that's the important thing it, it grabs the unburned hydrocarbons from one line which goes back to our gas tank we'll go back there in a minute and I'll show you that and it also picks it up off the carburetor here now in the case of the gas tank Let's say that you buy some gasoline in August and you buy it at 68 degrees out, out of the tank uh, at the gas station and you put it in the car and you go park on a hot, a hot asphalt parking lot. Obviously the gasoline in the gas tank is going to expand and it's going to cause uh, uh, some pressure. And that, that air-fuel mixture which was sitting on top of the gasoline has to go someplace. Uh, it used to vent right out in the atmosphere, but the federal government doesn't want it to go in the atmosphere. So now it's trapped in, in or on really the charcoal in the, on the charcoal in the charcoal canister. So whatever air has to be added to the gas tank to replace what's being drawn out comes through the charcoal canister, and more importantly, the fumes off the top of the tank, instead of getting vented directly to the atmosphere, get vented into the charcoal, which then gets purged and those gasoline fumes are burned up in the engine. Additionally, we have this line, as I said, that goes over to the, to the uh, carburetor, and that goes over to the float bowl on the carburetor. Now, when you turn the key off and the engine sits there with the bonnet down, of course, the under bonnet temperatures get real high, and the gasoline expands in the float bowl. The air fuel on top of the gasoline in the float bowl has got to be vented someplace on the T-types and MGAs and earlier Bs. It was just vented out those dump tubes or overflow tubes, most people call them, because that's the only time you, you ever see them work. Um, and it was just vented out to the atmosphere there, but from 1970 to 1980, uh, it's vented into the charcoal canister so that when you turn the key off and you get this expansion of uh, gases in there from the heat, that's run over here to the charcoal canister and trapped in the charcoal so that the fresh air going through it can, in fact, um, purge the, the gasoline vapors off that off the charcoal and burn them up in the engine. Additionally, in 1972 through 1980, the anti-run-on valve was added so that when you turn the car off, it doesn't diesel. Ba bump, ba bump, ba bump, bump, because every time it bumps, you're you're spewing out unburned gasoline uh, um, hydrocarbons into the atmosphere. The government doesn't want that. Now they want the car to shut off dead, just like that. So we've got this valve here, which blocks the, the fresh air coming through this tube into the charcoal canister. So this tube o over here, um, you know, e evacuates the engine. The engine evacuates the, the charcoal canister because fresh air can no longer get through here because this valve is operating when you turn the key off. and it begins to place a vacuum on top of the gasoline in the float bowl in the carburetor and that vacuum eventually gets so great that gasoline cannot be drawn out of the main jet and the engine stops. Well, in addition to just simply stopping it from coming through, uh, we have the anti-run-on valve who's hot when the key is off and grounded when, you, when we've got oil pressure. 
Now the only time those two things happen is right at the point where you turn the car off. The key turns off, it goes hot, uh, you've still got oil pressure so it's grounded, and you hear the valve operate. Then we take manifold vacuum and we further evacuate this canister which really evacuates the, uh, the float ball and stops the engine dead. We'll show you that in just a second. Let's go back to the trunk, to the boot, and uh, show you what's going on there. There is an additional canister back here, shown here, and this is perfect because this has still got factory lines on it and they're broken. So this guy probably is getting a lot of wafting of uh, gasoline fumes when he drives down the road. But this canister is designed so that you cannot overfill your gas tank and have raw gasoline spill on the ground. You fill the gas tank up, you park on an angle, and the gasoline is going to expand. It will expand into here rather than fall out on the ground. So that's what this is, the expansion canister. The fuel pump, of course, is down underneath all this junk in the trunk. Let's go back up front, and uh, I'm going to turn the key on. We'll start the car up. Remember from my former videos how, how we start the car from underneath the bonnet here with a white with brown wire. If we put our finger on top of, on the uh, line, that's perfect. So what's happened here, by me putting my finger on that line, I've stopped the, the flow of, of uh, air through here. It's evacuated the canister and put a vacuum on top of the float bowl, the gasoline on top of the float bowl, and caused it to die. Now, it should also work. It should also work. When we energize this valve. But it doesn't. So probably in this case, we have charcoal. Yep, here we have, we have the charcoal screen on the bottom of the canister is rusted away, and the charcoal is danced down the hose and danced into the bottom of the anti-run-on valve. So when the anti-run-on valve closes, it can't make a good seal. So that's why it wasn't working. That's a pretty common problem. But that charcoal canister you can take out, you can take apart, you can uh, lay, the, lay the charcoal out on a cookie sheet, out, well, when your wife's not home, uh, out in the driveway and let the sun evaporate the gasoline or you can warm it up a little bit with a torch and activate it again. There's no need to buy new charcoal. That's how, how the system works. If you've got any questions, you can always call us during tech time, which is 1 to 2 Eastern time. I'm happy to take your calls and uh, send us some more ideas about what you want to see on the videos. We'll be happy to show them and explain them. See you guys later.